and I'm, I'm riding, I'm riding back down Kedzie to get back on the 55. And sure enough, I come up to 26th, look at the shell, and who's pumping gas? I see your ass. I see him coming out from paying for the gas. I don't even think you guys stopped even fueled up. Just like, fuck it. Let's He's like, hey, he points, everybody hops in the truck, and I knew the chase was on and the light wasn't turning, so everybody gets in their car, light changes, I floor it, I'm flying down Kedzie. I think around the car wash there by the Dunkin' Donuts, which is like uh, 30th, or there's no 29th, so like 28th by the school there, where that, 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 that car wash you drive through, that's where I went on the curb. It's all traffic, and I think that's the only thing that kind of helped me get away a little bit. And I'm looking in the rear view. I'm at the light, like change light, and I'm seeing him cutting through traffic, yelling at you. I'm, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? What is my luck to see this nigga today? And I knew I should have came back in my other car. So he's giving chase. I'm. Flooring it, you know where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to the other side, you know, because I'm I'm an international player. I got friends on that side. I got friends on this side. So I'm trying to cut over there to that little back road to get up over to Pulaski. Yeah. Chase cutting back there. He's following me. As soon as I get out to Pulaski, I said, "Man, I'm going back into the hood." And he, he got he got mad at me because I was like, "Yo, he's going in." He's going into their hood, and he's like, I don't give a fuck. And he just kept on yelling at me, so I just kept on driving, and I was like, how the fuck this motherfucker? Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. So it's uh, November 4th today. I always have this um, situation where I mix up the dates, you know. He's born in, in November 23rd. Um, but we lost him on the 4th of uh, June. Um, so I transpose those numbers a lot sometimes. And because of where my tattoo's at on my back of him and his dates, I, I, even with a mirror, it's like hard for me to see the dates. So I sometimes mix those up. So, um, but November's always a month. And I think even my, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving but I think it was always a time that we kind of enjoyed together because it was really close to his birthday and Thanksgiving was this big feast of foods and all type of festivities that we would uh, get involved in and just going shopping around the Black Friday days and getting deals and getting everything for the kids and um, you know those are the sides of him that I get to that I got to see that a lot of people didn't get to see. Um, I was very much in, interwoven into the family dynamic of him. I, you know, his mom knew me well, dad knew me well, his wife knew me well. I'd pick her up, I'd pick their kids up. Um, and um, it was a family dynamic, and I was part of that for a long time. So, um, You know, today is a, is a heavy day for me because he's on my mind um, heavy today. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell a little story about him and uh, share that with you all and hope to connect with some people, talk about some things, some, some oversights. And sometimes when you're in the thick of things, and you're involved in a life, 
you really don't see the repercussions or the people or the collateral damage that comes from those things and I'm still right now going through it you know uh, being that I was locked up and lost my wife and you know affected my mom and in a major way and my brother and my grandmother and um, all the people that were rooting for me that loved me very much so you know you you affect all those people in a certain way and when you're in the life you know you think it's the best way for you or your best way to just um, get to where you're going for for me and Cato uh, De Niro Records was our way out it was our ticket you know um, and it, you know unfortunately we were fueling it with you know illegal things and street street things and trying to get there by any means necessary however we knew best um, and it just backfired. And even after, long after he died, I stayed, you know, in that. And, um, here we are 17 years later and I'm still recuperating from it. But I will say that I agree with Julio and, uh, you know, had he have not died when he did, things were probably would have went in a complete different trajectory in a different way you know we might have gotten a record deal but you know the indictment that would have came down would have put a lot of us in jail for 20 30 years um especially dealing with who we were dealing with at the time and you know we probably would have been rolled all up into that shit um when they shortly fled after um Cato's death so you know it's painful, very painful, still very painful, but I do believe that he's above watching, you know, sucking that meat out of his back tooth and and just smiling or smirking at us and happy that, you know, we we're still to this day keeping him alive, talking about him, talking about all the craziness we went through. And, and it's just a, one of those days, you know, when you miss your friend and uh, you wish he was still around. Even if it's just to smoke a cigar on a park bench or breathe some air, walk around, play some one-on-one -on -one hoops. Um, go shopping for kicks. I remember we used to go shopping all the time. We used to go to Briars. He'd buy me shit that I couldn't buy myself. Coogee sweaters and shit. And, Yo, wear this, man. You need to wear this. And, I got you. I got you. You know, he always was trying to elevate, you know, bring people up around him. And, uh, it was the probably one of the, the toughest times in my life because I didn't have an older brother. My father was in our lives and, you know, raised us, gave us a food and, you know, a uh, roof over our head, but wasn't really present. He, uh, he worked to death, you know, 80, 90 hours a week, drank on the weekends. So the few hours that he had to give to the family dynamic and to talk to us as kids and raise us as young men wasn't really um, wasn't really the type of father relationship that one would dream to have uh, you know rest in peace with my father I learned a lot of things and working and grinding hard and and providing for your family is one of the biggest things I learned from him but when it came to like that older brother or that male figure in my life, I think Cato kind of came into my life at a point in my life where I was kind of at a crossroads and I was done with mixtapes. <clears throat> they were after me for mixtapes and I didn't have anything to do at that point and I just dove into a life of crime and he kind of helped nav navigate that for me as it was all new to me. Um, 
I did small little shit, but nothing on the scale that we were doing things on. So um, rest in peace to him. Um, we'll definitely have a, a real birthday post and I'll have some special friends lined up to uh, wish him a happy birthday. And uh, But today was kind of like one of those days that threw me off. My energy was off and I'm like, what's going on? Oh, it's the fourth. Oh, it's his birthday. Well, it's not really his birthday. It's his, the anniversary of his his murder and his death. Um, but rest in rest in heaven, my brother, and uh, we are here keeping your name and and uh, your legacy alive. Uh, love you to death.